In this tutorial in Cyberlink Power Director, we're going to look at how to use a shattered glass effect in your production. We're going to look at some of the standard effects and a different way of doing it that in some cases may be preferable. I have on the screen a mock-up of a commercial for a vehicle from a dealership. And when I play this clip, you'll see it works pretty good. Uh, I have the price break come in and then it transitions toward the end of the clip to tell me that we're 22% off MSRP. And, but what I'd like to do in the first part where the words price break appear is I'd like to have those words actually shatter. You see this effect sometimes in advertising. How can I make them shatter? Well, the first thing I tried to do was go to the transition room in PowerDirector. Let's try that. I'll click on the lightning bolt on the left side. And then we're going to go down to our glass area. I click alphabetically, go into the G area. I have three different glass transitions. Now we're going to apply them only to the price break title. So if I take the glass and put it at the end of the title, Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to move my playhead back a little bit. We'll go ahead and play it. And when we do that, I find that it shatters. This particular transition shatters everything. Not only the title, but the, the car and the dealership name and everything else. That's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on that and uh, Click on the garbage can, that'll remove the transition. Let's try glass two. We'll take and drag that down and drop it into place and see what difference this makes. If I go ahead and play my movie from this moment on, I have price break and then I have a shattering. Now this one does not affect the car or the other title. Let's click back here in our, uh, get back out of play mode and click here. Now this actually does break up my price break a little bit, but it also shatters the entire layer that price break is on. So I don't want these things to crack, I just want the letters to crack. So that's not quite what I want either. So I'll click on that transition and click on the garbage can and remove it. Let's see what luck we have with the third one called Glass 3. If I click on this one and go ahead to movie mode and play it. Um, it does a different kind of shattering. It doesn't affect the other elements, but it's still not exactly what I want. I see the price breaking and shattering in, in a different way, but it's just, it's dealing with more than the simple letters. So let's look at a different way to do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove the transition. What I'd like to go do is go back to my media room and when I do that, I'm going to click on some media content. What I did was I took price break and I made it not a text, but an image. And then using Photoshop Elements, I broke that image up into seven component pieces. Let me show you how to do this. We have a tutorial in Photoshop Elements to, to make that happen. But what I'd like to do now, we're going to take out our text that's price break. And by the way, I tried going into the text uh, tools uh, to look for a, a starting effect or ending effect, and there wasn't any in Photo Director that would do it just for text. So that was not going to work. So we're going to use this different option here. I'm going to delete uh, the price break text, and I will leave the gap in here. Now we're going to take this particular icon, this uh, image of price break, and I will do a trim to fit for now, but then I want it smaller yet. So I'll make it about this size. I'll do trim only. So now I have price break. My first problem is it's too big. So I do have grid coordinates that I have put over my image so I can uniformly resize and move price break where I want it. So all the components will indeed be in the right location. So we're gonna drop it right here align it to this upper right corner of this grid here. So now I have price break. Now it will start out with the unshattered section called price break. And then in this segment here, 
we're going to break it up. We're going to create that illusion by taking each of these seven components and dropping them in. So I'll take this one here and drop it in. We'll do a trim to fit. And we'll also have to do what we just did before. We're going to have to resize it and reposition it so all the lettering is exactly on top of where it started. And then we'll take the second one. I'm going to give myself a little more room in my title tracks. We'll take our price break 2 and drop it in there. And we'll resize that as well. And then, of course, we have to go ahead and change the size and change the location. And when we do that, you'll notice it will begin to fill in what's what looks like a bit of a puzzle piece here. Then we'll take number three and do the same to that. We'll resize it, change the length of it, and we're going to uh, size it over here, position it, and make it fit over here so you see how we're doing. I'm going to pause the video and we'll do the other four pieces. Now I have all of the seven components stacked on one another in seven different tracks. And when we go and play what we have so far, we move from the solid image of price break. Click back on movie mode here. And then it, it's fractured in the section in here. Now we haven't had it break apart, but we have made some progress. So let me show you what we're going to do next. Um, we go from a solid price break again to this broken or cracked price break. But how do we make it fly apart? Well, to do that, all we need to do is keyframe each and every component. Now I could turn off all the other uh, tracks and deal with them one at a time. Let me, let me do that for now. That will make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on here. Okay, when I move the playhead here, I, we're only dealing with the first piece. This is part of the price break. So I'm going to double click on it to get into my pip designer. And here I have this one segment. To keyframe it, all I need to do is control the position. I'm also going to keyframe the rotation. So we move our playhead to the very beginning. I'm going to click the diamond on the position scale. I'll drag down. I'll click a diamond on the rotation scale. Now I'm not going to change it there. But let's go in to the project uh, about a second or so, uh, something like that. And then at this point in time, we're going to change both the position and the, and the rotation. OK, we're going to take, take the rotation and maybe spin it this far. And the position will drag it way up off the screen. Now I've set two more keyframes just by moving it. I'll click on OK. Now, if you notice what will happen when we go ahead and play this, and we only have part of the title here, but you'll see what, what goes on here. If I start here, we'll play, and that goes spinning off. Now, we're going to take the second element, and we'll make that visible. Get into our PIP Designer on this one, and now what we're going to do is the same thing. We take the playhead, move it to the beginning, control the position where we started it, and the rotation. And then we'll move about a minute in. And then we're going to take this one and we'll spin it this way. And we'll fly it over here on the screen. Doesn't matter where we go. And click on OK. Now I'm going to do this one more time so you see the technique and then we'll stop and do the others uh, independently. So I'm going to turn on number three, double click, that gets into my PIP designer. Okay, what I want to do now is make sure my plan's at the beginning. We'll lock in both the position and the rotation. And then we'll move over approximately a minute into it. And then we'll change both of these. And we'll fly it off over here. Click on OK. Now I'll pause the video and we'll do that to the other four components. So now let's see what happens when we've keyframed all the seven components of our image, which consists of the price break words. We're going ahead and play the whole clip, and you'll see it breaks apart. Only, only the image. 
And if we slow-mo it here, you can see that we have shattered it. We've caused the different components to fly away. And again, you can control the direction of each of them and the rotation, and they all split apart. And we've broken our price so we can focus on the nice discount on this Chevy. So that's an example of how you can do that using an object that you've broken into different segments in CyberLink PowerDirector.